In this lesson, we're going to be talking about capturing traffic. Oftentimes, you can't actually trust what's on a local system because it may have been compromised by a virus or a rootkit or some other piece of malware. And so you have to go to another source to gather information. In the case of a system that may have been compromised, for example, like a botnet, one of the things that you want to be able to do is to capture network traffic. So the best place to capture network traffic isn't necessarily on the host itself, for a couple of reasons, actually. The first is if you get onto the system and start doing that information on a system that's been compromised with a piece of malware like a botnet, your activities may actually be noticed depending on how smart the software that's engaged in the botnet is. But you may be noticed and it may actually interfere with the operation and you may not be able to get useful information because they may curtail their activities in some way. So where I really want to be able to go is I want to be able to go to the network somewhere. And I can do that through port spans on switches or various other means. There are some tools that you want to be familiar with, whether you're capturing on the host in the case where you feel you can or you feel you have no other option, or in the case where you've redirected some network output. So what I want to be able to use is a tool like Wireshark, for example. So I've got Wireshark here, and I am going to launch a network capture by going to the capture menu and selecting interfaces. And... I forget that I actually have to be administrator here, so I'm going to do this. And it's telling me that this is dangerous to run with root privileges, but I can't actually capture traffic on interfaces without root privileges. And so I'm going to run with root privileges so that I can look at traffic. And I've got BR0, which I know is my primary interface, and I'm just going to hit start, and it's going to start up a capture here. So I'm seeing a lot of traffic, and I can run this for a little while and see all of the traffic that goes on here and capture all of it. At some point, I am going to want to stop the capture, and right here there's the red octagon with the X running through it that says stop the running live capture. And I'm going to stop the capture. Right now I'm just going to pick a random or maybe not so random packet here to take a look at. Now I've selected the packet here in the top window and in the bottom window I'm going to see the information about that packet and you can see that Wireshark has done a very nice job of pulling that packet apart and showing us the information. So I've got frame number 1517 out of my capture set, and I've got a frame length of 60 bytes and a capture length of 60 bytes. Now I'm going to go to the layer two header here, and you can see it's a destination of a broadcast address. So basically this message was sent out to everyone on the local network. So it's done a broadcast, and the source is a Netgear device by the look of it. And the reason we know that is because Wireshark pulled apart the hardware address that's there at the end of the source line, and it says E0 colon 46 colon 9A. That's the vendor ID from that hardware address or MAC address. And so because of that, Wireshark has a vendor ID table that it stores, and it looked up that particular set of bytes, and it discovered that Netgear happens to own that particular vendor ID, so that we know that the source device happens to be a Netgear. Now, going a little bit further down, the higher level protocols or higher layer protocols this happens to be an address resolution protocol request, and it wants to know who has a particular address. So it wants to know the MAC address at 192.168.1.78. So it's got an IP address, and it needs to know a MAC address in order to get that traffic to it. This is just one example of 
all of the different packets that I've got here that I can take a look at. And here's another ARP request. And there's a lot of packets here. And it's really easy with Wireshark to take a look at what's going on. Of course, you still need to be able to understand the protocols a little bit to pull them apart and see what's really happening. So you need to have some level of protocol awareness as you look through this and be able to understand what the different IP addresses mean and where they're going and what they're doing. But Wireshark is one way that you could capture traffic. It's a pretty good way because it's graphical. You can clearly and easily see what's going on. You can also do filters. So I could do a filter on just ARP requests. I could do a filter on HTTP requests, and you could see those there. So that's Wireshark and one way of doing packet captures. And I'm going to quit without saving here. So I've got a Linux system, although this would work on a Mac OS system as well, as well as various BSD systems. So systems that are Unix-like typically would have the utility TCP dump. And that's a command line way of getting the same sort of information that I get with Wireshark. And I'm going to set the snap length zero, which says that I want to capture the entire packet rather than just the headers. I want all of the bytes that are associated with that particular packet. And I'm going to say I want to capture on interface BR0. So you can see here I'm getting a textual output of all of the packets that are going on. Now that's just spitting it out to the screen. What I could do, and you can see here once I kill it, it gives me a little summary of the packets that were captured and the packets that were dropped. So I could do a minus w out dot pcap, or I could call it out dot dump or something like that. Out dot pcap works pretty well because tools like Wireshark can read those in and it will recognize the pcap file extension as one that it knows about. So I'm going to say out dot pcap and now I'm listening on BR0. Rather than spitting out to the screen though, I'm actually writing them out to this file out.pcap. So I can kill that. And it says I've got 23 packets captured and 24 packets received by the filter. And that means that I got one packet that didn't actually get captured or written out before the kill message had been received. Now I could do Wireshark from here, and this is one way of getting around the problems with Wireshark. Now I'm not going to run it in root enabled mode. I'm just gonna run Wireshark. And I can do an open here, and I'm going to look for out.pcap in my list of files, and there it is right there. Now I can open that up. And here's all of the packets that got captured. And you can see these are primarily ARP messages, although there's some um, DNS queries there as well. So this is another way that you could do a packet capture or capture traffic on a system. And Wireshark exists for the operating systems that you'll primarily run across, Mac OS or Windows or, of course, Linux as well. TCP dump will run on Unix-like operating systems. If you need to capture packets in order to gather information, you've got some good options for the different platforms that you may be running on and need to capture on.